This video is going to show you how to use the air track simulator number two. A couple things about this, it doesn't give you the measurements directly, you're going to have to take them off the simulation itself. So to begin with, there's a built-in clock with a start and stop kind of flag. So these are going to be the two flags. It also has a stop and a go button to get it running. And then you have two types of collisions, an elastic and an elastic collision. That's going to be this button. It'll switch on the screen for you. It also has a reset button, which puts everything back in the original position. What's important to know is every time you load the page or reload the page, all the initial velocities that it starts off with, they all change. So if you start at the class and go home and try to finish it, you won't have the same set of numbers in the class that you were You might, but the odds are against you. Also, you can press the S button to toggle the sound off and on. So what you do next is you'll hit the continue button. Move on past the instruction screen. And you can see where everything is located. The masses are at the top, the orange cart's mass, the blue cart's mass. There's this thing over here on the right hand side in the red box. That's right here. And that's going to show you the cursor position. So all this is scaled over here. So as I move the cursor, I can actually get a measurement of how far apart each little line is, even the width of the cart, everything I need to know. It's got a stopwatch, which is up here. It's this red box. You can manually start and stop it, but actually this is all set up so you don't have to do that. Instead, what you can do is just move these flags that say start and stop. So there's the start flag. So if I want to measure from here to there, I just slide them into my two positions. I can record the distance up here in the X position. So I can see the initial position here for the red one. If I look in that red box, it says 0.3 meters. So i got to look over here, and it said 0.3 meters, but I'm moving my cursor now, so it doesn't say it anymore. And the stop button, stop marker, I can move that anywhere I want to, and you can see that how the cursor is also changing position. So I can measure the distance here, and I can measure the time it takes to go between my new two markers. So when I press go, it starts the stopwatch, stops the stopwatch. Now what's important to know is that these two flags will start and stop when any item hits it. So if, if I start it with the orange, and you can see I've got the blue one over here, it's going to start when the orange one hits it, but it's going to stop when the blue one hits the stop marker. So I'll press go, starts, stops. It didn't work. So you need to be careful and be very careful about how you place it. You can also switch the order of them and put the start on the right instead of on the left. So now when I hit go, the blue one starts it and the blue one stops it. So now that'll be the time it takes for the blue car to go between these two distances. If I hit reset, I have a couple options that pop up. I can make the original orange cart's velocity zero by clicking on that orange button. You can see it switches. So now when it runs, the orange cart won't move to begin with. Hit reset. I can also change the collision from inelastic to elastic. So or now it's inelastic, I should say. I can switch it back to elastic, so whether or not they bounce or stick. And if I get need my instructions, I can just click here to get my instructions back. This was the main screen when the whole thing started up.